Okay, good evening and welcome to the board meeting, which is now going to be convened. And I'll ask Holly if she will call the roll, please. President Swan, uh, the district secretary isn't here tonight um, due to a planned vacation, so I'm going to go ahead and call the roll if that's all right. Thank you, Gina. Okay, President Swan. Here. Uh, Vice President Henry. Here. Director Fultz. Here. Uh, Director Ferris. Here. Okay. Director Moran. Present. Okay, we have a quorum and all directors present. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. Okay, Rick, over to you with uh, new business. Uh, thank you, Chair Swan. Um, the subject is landslide debris flow hazard conditions now threatening uh, the San Lorenzo Valley uh, caused by the CZU wildfire. Mem this memorandum uh, presents uh, for the district's board of directors and the public, the status of uh, actions being taken by the district and other agencies to evaluate and mitigate landslides and debris flow hazard conditions created by the recent CZU lightning complex fire. The recommendation uh, is to, to review this memo that you should have all been sent to you late today uh, and posted uh, with the agenda and the hyperlink for the work report uh, and provide direction as to whether the board wants to agendize any of these items for further discussion or, future, or for, for further discussion and possible action. Uh, the CZU lightning complex wildfire started as a series of lightning fires on August 16, 2020 across Western Santa Cruz and San Mateo counties. The fire was active uh, for more than a month and burned uh, approximately 86,500 acres with 1,450 structures destroyed and one fatality. District staff have been working tireless, tirelessly since the start of the wildfire to mitigate, assess, and repair damage to its public water facilities and other public property. This includes approximately 1,600 acres of watershed land owned by the district that supplies about half of the water supply to the San Lorenzo Valley. Large areas of watershed land were burned by the CZU wildfire, resulting in landslide and debris flow hazard conditions during the upcoming rainy season. The district has been working as fast as it can with the help of emergency contractors to mitigate hazards, including identification and removal of fire damaged trees, posing hazards, hazards on district property. The district also has been, been coordinating with numerous uh, other agencies engaged in post-disaster emergency efforts within the San Lorenzo Valley. Such agencies include the County of Santa Cruz, Cal Fire, Cal OES, California Department of Conservation, FEMA, and the U.S. Department of Agricultural, USDA, and the Natural Resource Conservation Service, among others. Two of these agencies, Cal Fire and the California Department of Conservation, recently uh, released a report entitled Watershed Emergency Response Team Evaluation, CZU Lightning Complex. A copy of, the, of this, what we call work report, is available. The link is uh, embedded in this memo and is on our website. Um, the district received a copy of the work, work report October 12th, 2020 from the Santa Cruz County Department of Public Works. The first page of the work report explains that the mission of work is to uh, help communities prepare after wildfire by rapidly uh, documenting and communicating post-fire risk to life and property posed by uh, debris flows, flood, and rockfall hazards. The findings uh, included in this report are not intended to be fully comprehensive or uh, conclusive, but rather to serve as a preliminary tool to assist responsible agencies in the development of more detailed post-fire emergency response plans. It is intended that uh, the agencies will use this information presented in the report as a preliminary guide uh, to, the, to complete their own more detailed evaluations and to develop detailed emergency response plans and mitigation. Uh, the work report identifies hazards uh, to district territory starting on page 39 of the report, the Highway 9 uh, corridor titled the Highway 9 Corridor uh, Observations. Uh, based on field observations, 
it appears that there is a moderate to high potential for debris flow impacts to life and safety and property within and adjacent to the following creeks and streams. That's the Jamison Creek, Foreman Creek, Clear Creek, an unnamed tributary upslope of downtown Boulder Creek, unnamed tributary uh, upslope of Acorn Drive, and an unnamed uh, tributary to Hare Creek. Uh, the work report further uh, starts or further states starting on page 40, uh, based on limited field reconnaissance, a property, a properly designed and located deflection structure may reduce the potential for avulsion from the current channel on an unnamed watercourse immediately upslope of the Boulder Creek Elementary School an adjoining residential neighborhood. That un unnamed water course uh, is what the district calls Harmon Creek. It's a source that the district used many years ago, uh, located above the Boulder Creek Cemetery. Uh, the actual debris flow pathways are highly uncertain and were difficult to predict during the rapid evaluation. Deflection structures may prove effective in reducing uh, the chance for uh, avulsion in other areas where the potential for post-fire debris flows and flooding impacts were observed. Uh, for these reasons, the report recommends further observation and determinations be made by state certified professional geologists and professional engineers. Uh, the work report makes the following recommendations for the Highway 9 corridor. You can see those uh, on page 41 and 42. Uh, consider specific recommendations for uh, values at risk. Those are listed in, uh, in the report. Utilize early warning systems tied to prediction of incoming storm events. Educate the public about post-fire debris flows and how rapidly they move. The public should be informed to be out of the way of potential flow paths before a storm impacts the area. Uh, areas along the Highway 9 corridor that are identified as post-fire hazard areas should not be occupied during storm warnings. Uh, provide Boulder Creek residents and commercial business owners with information included in this report so they may understand their proximity to hazard areas and take appropriate actions. Perform storm patrols and monitor road drainage infrastructure. Consider vegetation and debris, debris removal within the channels, particularly at watercourse uh, crossings. Utilize experts in civil, geotechnical, uh, hydrologic, engineering, soil, erosion, hydrology, and engineering uh, geology to develop site-specific recommendations and mitigation activities. Uh, consider and evaluate the potential for installing stormwater control and deflection structures, including sandbags and or concrete K-rail along stream banks and around residents, around residents for high flood, flood flows and debris flows are predicted along drainages. The district takes the work recommendations extremely serious. Time is short before the start of the rainy season. Uh, though the urgency, uh, uh, through this urgency scheduled board meetings, the district is continuing its efforts to educate the public, including local residents and businesses about the hazards of post fire debris flows. The district understands that the county is working on a debris flow response plan including evacuation plans for local neighborhoods. Upon its release, the district will help push out this information to the public, posting on the district's websites and social media. Other actions taken by the district include pursuing the possibility of installing deflection structures as described in the work report. In particular, as shown above, the work, as shown above, the work report mentions mitigation measures to prevent possible debris flows from leaving the Harmon Creek Channel and flowing through the Boulder Creek uh, Cemetery Elementary School and into the town of Boulder Creek. However, the recommendations of the work report are not well defined in terms of a project or projects that could be constructed by uh, reasonable agencies such as the district within the necessary timeframes. The district continues to engage in ongoing discussions with county representatives with direct post-fire knowledge of the Harmony Creek watershed and work report. The district believes the county could help facilitate a design for deflection structure given its familiarity with the watershed and its technical resources such as professional geologists and engineers, and most importantly, the county's ability to reach out to state and other federal 
agencies with emergency construction capabilities well beyond uh, those of the district on its own. Uh, the district has clearly and consistently communicated its willingness to participate in a project or projects in cooperation with other agencies. The scale of the potential, uh, the scale of the possible emergency is far beyond the resources of the district to prevent or meaningly uh, full mitigate on its own limitations on the district's ability to design and construct mitigation projects on its own include permitting requirements and timeframes, lack of uh, internal technical expertise, such as professional geologists, engineers, and liability concerns of private consultants. On October 19, 2020, district staff and its engineering consultant met with a team of engineers from the USDA to apply for funding for engineering design and construction costs for stormwater control and a, and a deflection structure. Regret, regrettably, no feasible project or projects uh, alternative were identified uh, through this consultation at this time. District staff understands that uh, in response to concerns raised by the district and others, the county recently facilitated a meeting with Cal OES Watershed Task Force to discuss the findings of the work report. Today, the Watershed ta Task Force has reached out to the district and, uh, and the county to the district to set up a meeting with the district manager to discuss debris uh, slide mitigation measures mentioned in the work report when whether or whether or not the district should pursue any of these measures. The district has been informed that a viable project is identified. If a viable project is identified, it may be eligible for FEMA grant funding. The district will continue its efforts to identify whether or not there is a viable mitigation project and to seek county, state, and federal assistance as necessary. Additionally, the district will continue communicating with the public about the hazards associated with possible landslides and debris flows and update its uh, internal response plans for the protection of public water facilities in the event of emergency. Um, with that uh, is my report. As up to, to today, uh, with that, I'll turn it back over to Chair Swan. Thank you, Rick. Uh, pretty comprehensive. With uh, respect to the uh, watershed task force reaching out to the district to set up a meeting, what's the status of that at this time? Well, the, the meeting was facilitated uh, through the county uh, with Supervisor McPherson's office taking the lead. Um, we are, I do believe, scheduled for a meeting on this Tuesday. This coming Tuesday. This coming Tuesday, that's correct. Okay. Um, do we have any questions from the board at this time? Uh, hello. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Yeah, Lois, one second. Bob had his blue hand up before your uh -oh. hand. Bob, go ahead. Um, yeah, thanks, Rick, for, for going through that. I, I wanted to ask a few questions, make sure I understand the, the situation um, clearly. Um, in the report, uh, in the recommendations that were made, there is a line here that um, says, provide Boulder Creek residents and commercial business owners with the information so they may understand their proximity to hazard areas and take appropriate actions. What would those appropriate actions be? Right now, I, I really can't answer that, Bob. Um, the county is in the process of putting out uh, evacuation information and mapping. And I don't want to speculate, but I believe the county will be putting out that information. So at this point, the only thing that's contemplated is evacuation. Not to my knowledge, yes. So and, you know, there's, they're putting out a lot of other information on, you know, how you should make sure that you're prepared. Yes, evacuation is number one. Uh, you know, make sure your drainage is open. You know, the the preparation type information. Well, I mean, could it include, for example, a homeowner deciding they wanted to put K rail up around their house? I'm not sure of that. I I would have to refer that to the county. I don't believe so. Um, I, I believe the county is working on mapping on areas that they feel that there could be debris flows and are center, centering on evacuation. 
but I, so I can't speak be, for them. I understand that, but I mean, we've we've talked to them. Are, are they themselves thinking about initiating or supporting any mitigation projects that we, we may want to take with respect to putting K-Rail around channels, what have you? As of now, no, but uh, you know, those are questions that we will uh, we will have when we meet uh, next week uh, to talk about what we can do. And you know, there's there's a lot of difference of opinions I'm getting on, on the Worth report. You know, it, it's there's still a lot more information that's needed. You know, as the Worth report says, it was a very 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 quick look. Um, and so there's still a lot of folks digesting that. And I know they're out cleaning culverts and cleaning channels and so forth now. You see them every day. In a debris flow, how effective will culverts be? I, I can't answer that. Um, I mean, if the culvert gets plugged, then it's just going to go around the culvert, right? I mean, uh, right. Well, I, I do know from other meetings that the county uh, and, and, the, and Caltrans especially We'll be deploying teams uh, out uh, to keep uh, the culverts open along the Highway 9 corridor. Um, I did hear that from, from a Caltrans rep representative. Well, given we have about six weeks, maybe, before the rains start, maybe, if we're lucky, um, time is short. Uh, if we had a project that we wanted to do, um, is the county, state, and federal governments prepared to move quickly on permitting? Or are we looking at a normal permitting process here, which would take months to years? I will get those. Those are questions that if we develop a project, uh, those are questions that we will ask, definitely. Um, and I, I, have we, I, I don't have we not asked? Have we I, not asked those questions yet? Well, we don't have a project. I think it depends on if we have a project. I, I think this is a, given timeframes, this is kind of a parallel thing where um, you know, they need to be sort of giving us some signals, I think, whether or not this is something they're going to support. Would we be able to find, given that there may not be any county or state or federal agencies prepared to help engineer this, are there private consultants we can tap into to help engineer a mitigation plan? Possibly. Um, the, the, I have contact, I've reached out. Private consultants are, are concerned about um, litigation on, on construction or design of such a structure. You mean if they were to design something and it failed due to just the fact that debris flows are unpredictable, that they could be sued? Most likely. I, we, I didn't get that deep into their reasons, but I did not find an interest. But that was just me looking locally. Now, once we meet with Cal OES, there may be a whole different, you know, they may have engineers that they deal with or um, different uh, consultants that they deal with that do this type of work during this time, uh, during debris flows and so forth, uh, and that could be tapped for their resources. I haven't got that far yet. Okay, thank you. I'll have some other questions later, but I know other people want to talk. Thanks, Rick. Okay, Lois, your turn. Well, Bob uh, asked so many questions. He asked some of mine. Uh, let's see if I can dig something else up out of my brain. Um, uh, Rick, what's the chance of finding a, a geologist that can work for us? That are the might be available and to do this kind of work. I, I think, you know, that's possible. I think that's very possible. You know, I'll know a lot more after uh, Tuesday's meeting of what is possible. Okay. So uh, we're getting more cooperation from the county. Is that yes. what I'm hearing? We're, we're getting a lot of cooperation from the county working with us to to try to to try to develop a project possibly or to determine if a project is needed okay 
Well, it, it sounds like pretty scary stuff to me. I mean, where I am, I'm not going to get a debris flow, but I, I assume, unless somehow it got to Lompico Creek, which in like 82, some woman fell in Lompico Creek and they found her body down at, at um, by, by the uh, Big Band area or whatever. <laughs> not funny. Uh, but it sounds pretty scary for people, for the school. Um, and, and I'm wondering how we're going to help people understand the risk. Uh, A lot more information to... will be coming out from, uh, from the county regarding debris flow and mapping and so forth. Okay, but if you build something and you change the course, the map of where the debris flow might go, it might not count. The debris flow might go elsewhere. Right? Possible. <laughs> Possible. You know, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm not trying to avoid any of these questions, but I, I am not an engineer, um, and we're not quite there yet. And I, I know that I wish we were farther with more answers tonight, but unfortunately, this is kind of an introduction to the board, okay. and I'm gathering questions from you all as, as the meeting goes on. And these are all great questions, pretty much the same ones that, that staff had. Uh, and we'll be uh, addressing this more uh, Tuesday. Okay, thank you, Rick. I know you have a tremendous amount on your plate and there's a lot of things to find out yeah, about this answer, particular thing. I just can't answer these questions, but I, 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 I appreciate get answers. Thank you. Well, thank you, Lois. Uh, Rick Moran? Uh, yes. Uh, first, I'd like to say uh, to District Manager uh, Rick Rogers for being proactive on uh, dealing with another part of the CZU fire. Um, <clears throat> but um, it's always been a concern of mine that we try to control uh, nature. And uh, as much as the, the documents that I read, there's always this uncertainty about what they can actually do and pr uh, provide uh, safety for um, people and their property. Um, most of all, what I'm concerned about is the safety of people. And um, I don't really know if uh, K-rails or any kind of other deflection um, mitigation is going to uh, really work and to what to, because uh, all the, uh, debris flows that I've seen around here and in California, I have seen debris flows up in Mount St. Helens where there's a tremendous amount of wood. And that's, I think, what we have. And that there's no K rail that I know of uh, that's going to prevent great big redwood trees from going wherever they want to go. And they're going to change course very little, uh, if any. So I'm, I'm not really concerned. Uh, I don't think our efforts should be so much in a physical trying to uh, deal with this as much as an educational thing. And um, to, you know, I think people realize there's risk living up here and this is part of it. And we should do as much as we can to provide uh, information uh, that would keep them out of their homes during a highly probable time. And that's again, what it is, highly probable. There's, there's very little certainty about this. So I, I, I understand people's desire to, um, you know, have some understanding about this, but we, we can't be certain about any of this. Um, and we can, the best we can do is try to be safe. And so I'm going to emphasize we spend as much of our energy in, in focusing on education and keeping people aware of the weather situation up here and uh, being uh, tied into the alert systems that we have. And uh, I love this idea of the patrolling. We need to, you know, those are the things that I want to see uh, focused on. Thank you. And, and just to touch on that, Rick, the county is doing a lot of these recommendations in, into yeah. their, uh, into their uh, 
their, their program moving forward. They're discussing almost all of those recommendations for the early, early warning system and so forth and uh, keeping an eye on culverts. Also, we're, we're working with uh, the county on tying our rain gauges in with the county system uh, on the early uh, warning, uh, uh, on the early warning uh, alert system. Uh, there and, uh, are a series of rain gauges that the county will be monitoring. And if I could just say one more thing, Steve, um, is uh, when I first moved up here, I became a uh, weather spotter for KION television. And uh, because there, there were no uh, rain reports uh, for the San Lorenzo Valley. And uh, I knew it was raining a heck of a lot more than it was in Capitola where I used to live. Um, and what I'm really glad to see, and as I see these reports, is they're talking about uh, not inch a day, not inch an hour, they're talking about rainfall for, for for 15 minute periods, which is if we've lived up here long enough, we've seen that it may rain a lot during an hour, but there's these really high in, intense periods that really only last 10, 15 minutes long. And those are the things that we need to be, you know, I, I like the incremental uh, definition that's coming out of some of this work that's being a little more precise. And I like that. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Uh, uh, Rick, I wanted to ask the uh, uh, with respect to the the public awareness program. You're saying the county is starting to do a lot in that area. Have has the county produced any sort of plan yet that addresses the public awareness and and information? I do believe they're working on it. If it, if it isn't out, they're all they are working on it, and it should be rolling out shortly. I don't have those dates in front of me. But I do know that they're they are working on mapping and on on getting out uh, a lot of information to the general public. Okay, if you, if you could provide us with an update with where well, and, they are when you get a chance, you know, to, and, and we've to offered to, to share that you know through our email the trees and our Facebook as well uh, okay. to help get the word out. And they have been putting a lot of information out um, as time goes on. Okay, thank you. Uh, Lou, you have uh, your hand up. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> I noticed there's a large number of public participants tonight, and I would suggest at this point that we go to the public because I suspect a lot of people are wanting to uh, weigh in on this issue, and I want to make sure everybody that wants to has a chance to speak. So I would, I would suggest we hold any more comments for the board until after the public weighs in. We'll go right there shortly. Uh, if there, is there any final board questions right now that are burning? And then we'll go to the public. Bob? Just uh, Chair, Chair Swan, before you go to the public, yeah. just so the public knows that if they, you know, technical questions, we will not be able to answer tonight, but we will collect questions. Uh, so we can get these questions answered. Um, again, I'm not an engineer or a geologist or a hydrologist. Um, and this is uh, a very technical uh, information. So, uh, but we will keep track of their questions. Uh, the meeting is being recorded and we will try to get answers for people. Thank you. Bob, we'll be coming back to the directors again, uh, but if you wanna ask a question right now before we go to the public, feel free. Um, I, I wanted to um, Ask Rick if it would be possible to have another board meeting next Tuesday or Wednesday after the um, his meeting with the OEA. Uh, the, the, sure. This is critical from my point of view. Sure. Um, and there is some talk uh, from uh, Supervisor McPherson's office to also have a public meeting as well to answer questions. Um, I, I think that is still. Uh, in the development stages as well. Uh, Supervisor McPherson has taken a, a lead on this. In fact, has been out on the watershed with many of the local business uh, and community members touring watershed and has taken a real interest in this. Uh, matter of fact, I talked to him as of late today. Um, so I, I think uh, that he will be also moving ahead with something as well. But yes, we can schedule another meeting. I have no problems with that. Great, thank you. Okay, let's uh, open it up then for the public. Of our attendees, we have uh, Gail Mahood. You have the floor. 
Okay. Um, in my previous life as a volcanologist before I retired, um, I spent over 40 years worrying about debris it's flows seven that were triggered by um, volcanic eruptions. And so I know a fair amount about this and what happens when you try to mess with Mother Nature. And uh, I read this uh, memo and I thought the first three pages were excellent, um, warning people. But when I got to the fourth page, I just thought it was a terrible idea in that we were essentially taking responsibility for an act of God. And we were taking responsibility for debris flows when we would never take responsibility if there'd been a little flood that went down those same creeks. Um, so I thought that the fourth page was actually setting us up to get sued. Um, secondly, the uh, diversion structure that Wirt put out um, would in potentially, if it worked, and I think Rick Moran brought up the question that you never know whether it worked, given the kind of debris that's going to be coming down, um, would actually divert it down into the town of Boulder Creek. And so instead of taking out the school, you take out about a dozen houses. Well, when they've tried that in Italy, where they've diverted lava flows and saved a town, the people that sued them were the other town that was inundated by a lava flow. So you have to be really careful when you start diverting things because it's unpredictable where things will go. But in that particular one, it is absolutely sure that if something stayed in the channel, it will end up over those 12 houses. The other is, is if you take responsibility for what's happening on that alluvial fan in Boulder Creek, then you're also gonna have to take responsibility for the alluvial fan that is at the foot of Foreman Creek, which has Boulder Brook and the community there. And even worse, Clear Creek, the whole town of Brookdale is on an alluvial fan um, that was affected, for example, in the huge flood of 1982. So once we start down this road, and Peabine Creek has a small alluvial fan. So once you start down this road, um, there's really um, no end to it. And so I, I just would say that I think that the wiser thing to do would be to um, basically, if, the, if Caltrans or the state or the county wants to build diversion structures on our watershed lands, then they have to do it and they have to take the liability for it. And you've already expressed the problem of why you've had such a hard time finding a engineering geologist to do this is the unpredictability with what will happen. You can get sued either because you divert something or you can get sued because the thing that you attempted to uh, divert didn't work very well. And so I, I just would suggest that we be very, very careful as we proceed on this and not take responsibility for something that's an act of God and that uh, we wouldn't, for example, in a normal flood take responsibility for. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Well, it is 2020, so anything's up for grabs, it seems, this uh, this year. Uh, Larry Ford. Here we go. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to hear some discussion about the distinction between uh, potential responsibilities that the district might take uh, for its own to protect or to uh, recover its own infrastructure as distinct from the, some of the discussion that I've heard so far, which is that we might be more concerned about residences and business owners and other people that uh, happen to be affected by these floods. I think the district's first responsibility has to be to um, Ensure that that you know we can continue to deliver water, sa safe water, to uh, the ratepayers, and um, work out what those are. And so, what I'd like to hear the board do right now is to say, yes, District Manager Rogers, we support you. We endorse your plan to start to develop um, pre and post emergency plans for the district's interests, and. Um, give whatever funding or authority is needed for Mr. Rogers to, to proceed with that. 
I I think that's really the first step that's that's necessary. A lot of these other things about you know the specific design for uh, deflection structures or um, you know how how the debris flows might go in different directions. Those those would be secondary to the considerations about protecting the the district's infrastructure. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Okay, do we have any other uh, comments or questions from the uh, audience? President Swan, may I um, just interject for a moment? Um, sure. I see that we have a couple of comments on chat. And uh, while that is a public record, it's not regularly monitored uh, as part of this public meeting. Because this is a public meeting and we want all the staff and the public and the board members to be able to participate, it would be helpful if you could uh, address the board uh, through the uh, speaking during the public comment period. Put up, put up your hand and request to speak and uh, make your comment and ask your question that way so that everybody is aware of it. That would be very much appreciated. Thank you, Jen. Um, Gina? Uh, Mr. Armstrong. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, uh, I'd like to just uh, say that I really do appreciate everything that you're going through with this, and I understand the challenges and the long-term costs that are associated with these kinds of events, having been through a number of them as a civil engineer, for example. My, my suggestion is to find somebody who can be your point person on this, take the responsibility away from the actual operations itself because you guys have already got your hands full completely and you're doing a very good job overall of handling all of this and this additional stress that's going to go on for a number of years with a tremendous amount of emotionality and potential loss for members of the community and meetings with the county which you know can consume a tremendous amount of bandwidth in a public forum, I would suggest that you find somebody who you feel is competent to carry this water forward for the district and let them deal with all of this. And then, then um, you all just continue to focus on bringing the operations back up to where they were before in a, in a, in a predictable uh, and uh, realistic manner. That's a huge challenge in itself. And adding all these other, piling all this other on is just not gonna produce benefits. I just don't see it as a value. I see there's just way too many variables here to deal with, way too many observations, way too many data points. It's just gonna be a very complicated problem going forward. And, uh, and I think it could very easily take down the whole water district if, if everybody gets all spaced out about it. You know, focus on the core mission, get that together, hold it as close as you can, and then um, and then let the, this other problem evolve on its own. That's that's my thoughts on it. And thank you again very much. Greatly appreciated. Thank you, Everything. Mr. Martha, and, and thank you for the pun. Um, okay, uh, Beth Thomas. Hi, thank you. Um, I I have a couple of questions um, for Rick Rogers. Rick, are you know the, it seems to me that the county is the key agency that's involved with this and has has the greatest responsibility for coordinating the other agencies. I didn't hear you say whether or not the fire departments of the communities were involved in these conversations and whether or not the school district was involved. I, uh, thank you for the question, Beth. I am not sure about the school district, but I do know the Valley Chiefs are working very closely with key people, key representatives uh, of the county uh, regarding debris flows. Uh, uh, they're meeting several times a week um, and developing uh, you know, response plans. They're very informed. The county is keeping the fire districts very informed. That's great, because as we know, they're, they're sort of our key first responders. Um, and I would say with respect to some of the conversation about liability and you know whether we should be 
talking about, you know, our our role in in preventing disaster for residents or just or solely for the infrastructure of the water district. But in a small community like this, I don't think we can take a position that's black and white. I think that our community would consider us not to be doing our job if we solely looked at the liability interests of the water district. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Any other um, public comments, questions? While we wait to see if there are any, let me ask you a question, Rick, too. Uh, basically, uh, leveraging off of uh, Larry Ford's question, are there are there specific plans that that uh, the district is doing specifically oriented towards preserving its infrastructure, irrespective of of uh, some of the other matters that you're looking to the county to help address? Are there con specific concerns and specific plans that are being uh, developed or you know put into place? Uh, yes, I, I I'm glad you brought up uh, Mr. Ford's question because I wanted to add to. Uh, to answer his questions, yes, uh, the district, uh, the director of operations and Sandus Engineering are uh, have been out uh, at key facilities along potential debris flow uh, routes, such as you know our Foreman Creek uh, intake structure, our the pipeline we just replaced, our water treatment plant, and some other key facilities, and have uh, designed erosion control measures. Um, for those areas, we are uh, hardening uh, our infrastructure uh, as we speak. Um, the surface water sources and pipelines, you know, they've all been destroyed by fire. There's nothing to protect uh, up, in, uh, up in the watershed. But our treatment plant, uh, we are uh, putting a, uh, quite a uh, erosion control around that treatment plant. Uh, including K rail, uh, just in case, because it is right at the, the foot of a of a pretty steep embankment, uh, and we are uh, doing uh, some other deflection uh, up our former creek uh, to protect the new pipeline that was just installed. To answer that question, yes. Thank you, Rick. Okay, uh, I don't see any other hands coming up on the uh, the public here, so we'll go back to uh, the board, Lou. Uh, Give you a chance to continue off where you uh, left off. Actually, I think Bob was before me, so I'm going to let him go ahead first. Uh, go, go ahead. Otherwise, flip coin. Yeah, you you uh, gave up your time to the public, so go ahead. Lou, it's up to you. I had. <laughs> oh, Lou, did you disconnect yourself? You're on mute. Uh, go I, ahead, hit it, I hit it again. Okay, there you go. Well, okay, I'm, I'm back. Um, just a quick question for you, Rick. Uh, speaking as a follow-up to what Larry was saying and Steve was saying, is there any sort of an early warning system that we can put in place to give us time in case there are debris flows that threaten the town of Boulder Creek? Is there, you know, video monitoring? Is there, you know, satellite monitoring? Is there anything that, that we can do to give us, um, you know, time to, to execute an evacuation plan or an emergency plan um, specific to, to debris flow that, that we know is headed in, in our direction. And um, well, I guess that's the main question. Go ahead, Rick. Uh, what I do know, the county is working, uh, putting together an early warning uh, system. They are linking a series of rain gauges. Uh, USDS is work or uh, um, uh, not USDS, um, the, uh, oh, well, they're, they're having, uh, one of the government agencies USGS. are working USGS. with the county. USGS. Yeah, USGS, there you go. USGS is working with the county on installing uh, a pretty uh, sophisticated rain gauge uh, up on our watershed, uh, up right below uh, the Braymore area, and that'll be tied to a, a network of gauges, uh, and the county is working on it some type of early warning system. I don't have all the particulars. I just know they are working on that. Um, and okay. um, we have tied our rain gauges into that system. Just to follow up to what you said, um, it's fine to have monitoring of, of rain with rain gauges, but I think it would be even more important to monitor other things like earth movement. 
you know, and I, the USGS does a very good job of that. You know, once the, it's not how much rain is coming down, it's when the earth starts to move that we need to know. And um, that I, you know, I have no problem with rain gauges, but I would certainly like to have at least some sort of earth movement early warning system uh, investigated as well. I'll get more information on the early warning for you, uh, Director Ferris. Okay, Bob. Thanks, uh, Steve. Yeah, you, you know, one of the first jobs of um, governmental agencies is protection of life, safety, and property. And in situations like this where the disaster is, uh, had one disaster is passed, but the potential for another one is well known, um, is not protection against getting sued. Um, and it, it is entirely possible that the district and or other agencies could get sued for doing nothing. Um, in, in the case of the big rainfall of 1982, Rick, didn't the district get sued for some damage? Um, nothing that we caused, but and certainly unexpected, but I believe there were some lawsuits that came out of that. Um, I think the, the question is, is do we collectively, meaning the district as the owner of the property, which is means we have a certain amount of responsibility there, but we don't have the resources to do the whole job. Do we, in conjunction with the county, state, and possibly the federal government, try to figure out a way to do something, um, not letting the perfect be the enemy of doing something, or do we do nothing? Um, and I, I recall reading in the paper about uh, Chief Bingham's um, really call, inspirational call to action during the fighting the fire that you know the schools represent and, and a lot of the town represents the soul of the town. And it would be a real shame to have saved the school from uh, the fire to potentially lose it into a debris flow if there was something that could be done to potentially mitigate against that. I, I don't think there's any perfect solution here, but I, I am not one to just say, hey, we're gonna let, um, we're gonna let it be what it's gonna be. Uh, if we're putting up K-Rail around our facilities, why would individuals or other people not be allowed to put up K-Rail around their facilities and their assets and their retirement funds and their property in a way that, you know, it, that, that's, not, that's not a level playing field. Um, and so I'm really hopeful, I, again, as you recognize the district can't do it's on its own. We do not have the resources for this. 8,000 subscribers do not have the resources to deal with 1,600 acres. Um, I'm very hopeful that the county uh, will step up and, and the state and the federal government will step up and not put this through a five-year permitting process because we don't have the time for that. If, this isn't, if something isn't being done in the next few weeks, um, then basically we've made a decision through omission that nothing is going to be done and we're going to let nature take its course regardless of whether that means um you know some massive destruction maybe we'll get lucky and we'll have a light winter i, I certainly hope so although we could use rain in other areas and isn't the Harmon creek uh issue that was identified wouldn't the potential flow impact our administrative and operations buildings potentially if it's coming right through the school it's coming right down the street um, I, I, I am, I, I would be, I would be very disappointed if we end up just saying, Hey, nothing we can do. We're not going to try. Um, we're just going to let it be what it's going to be. That's a tough one. I, I would have a hard time going to the community with that one. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Rick Moran. Well, I, I see Lois has her hand up, and uh, I'll defer to Lois at this point. Where's her hand? Oh, uh, she, she oh, added up. I took it down because I added up for thirty minutes. But. I'll defer to Miss Henry. Okay, okay, Lois, I, you were doing so good with the blue hand button last week or last uh, meeting. 
<laughs> go, go well, ahead. I've been doing that. You're anyway. Um, um, okay, I get confused between go to meeting and Zoom. I have no idea what's going on. Um, I, I think that there's no easy answers here. And if the district does something that causes more damage, um, they're in trouble. If we do nothing and there's damage, there's trouble. Um, this basically is an act of God when this happens. Um, I, I'm not sure how if necessarily you can be sued. And I don't care if this is a small community. The district has been sued before. And in fact, this board worked hard to get rid of those lawsuits that cost the district so much money and kept infrastructure from being fixed. And I don't want to see the district be sued again. But if somebody can tell me how, what we can do if things go wrong to keep from being sued, if we do nothing, if we do something, it doesn't matter. Uh, the chance is there, and just because we're a little community, um, it hasn't stopped people from suing the district in the past. And what is our, I've been asking, what is our safety here? And it may be warning people, and this is an act of God. We can't be held responsible for an act of God. People can try to hold us responsible. Um, but that, that's just the way I'm looking at it. I, I want everyone to be safe. I don't want anybody to be um, flown out to, out to the beach. Uh, I, I don't want anything to happen to anybody. I don't want anybody hurt. I don't want anybody's property destroyed. I don't want the district's properties destroyed but let's get real here. What can we really do? And we don't have those answers tonight. Okay, uh, hang on, Lois, thank you very much. I'm gonna call an audible here and ask Rick Moran to hold for one second. We're all asking a lot of legal questions and we have a legal scholar on the phone. Let's get an official legal uh, assessment or opinion, or at least a comment from uh, Gina who graduated first in her class at Yale to comment. Gina? Oh, uh, I didn't go to Yale, uh, President oh. Long, but, uh, uh, and, I, and, and frankly, I hesitate to, to comment um, on some of these issues. I mean, there's a lot of great comments being, being made. They're zeroing in on a lot of the real issues that the district is facing. Um, but uh, I think the key question is the one that was just asked is uh, what can the district do? And as I understand it, that is exactly what the district manager and the district staff are trying to figure out going through this process with other agencies um, and that they're gonna run that to ground and come up with a plan um, that maximizes the protection for the community and the district assets that are at stake. Given your experience with other water districts, uh, through Nossaman, et cetera. Have you encountered similar, a similar situation and, and what sort of examples might there be that we could look at as, you know, whether a district did something to try to prevent or, or uh, ameliorate a, a natural disaster potential or, or didn't do something? Is there, is there equal liability as we're kind of hearing you know, the amateurs discussed tonight. Well, these situations are too fact specific to say do X, Y, and Z. Um, the circumstances are gonna be different everywhere. The liability is gonna be different everywhere. The engineering is gonna be different everywhere. Um, in terms of getting, looking for analogous factual patterns, 
the most recent uh, analogous situation may be the uh, uh, Goleta uh, Montecito mudslides that occurred after the wildfires up there a couple of years ago. Okay, and, and, and what was the result of that? What did they result in uh, from the standpoint of the water districts? Uh, I, I mean, I could try to, to, to research that, but frankly, it's not going to be very a very productive exercise. Um, a lot of that wouldn't have made its way through the courts. It would set a lot of court. Um, it would depend on the facts and circumstances of each particular situation. Um, I can take a look to see if there's anything that can be gleaned from it. Um, but the reality is that... Um, the district's got to deal with the facts and circumstances presented to it here. Um, and I, I believe that the district is doing the best it can with that in working with these other agencies to try to figure out what can feasibly be done to address the risks that are presented. All right. Okay. Thank you, Gina. We, we appreciate that on the behalf of the district. <laughs> Go ahead, Rick uh, Moran. You had yes. Your, thank right? you. I kind of want to respond to a couple of people's uh, loose question and, uh, maybe to what uh, Bob was driving out here, is uh, Lou, I think um, for the detecting land motion, uh, they have creep meters for uh, earthquakes. I don't know if those could be incorporated in what we're trying to do, but I know there's early ways of detecting uh, small motion, all right? But everything that I know and have read about uh, these debris flows is they are quick. And the early, so early warning is hard. So what we're trying to do is have the, increase the warning time, all right? So whatever we can do to do that, I agree with you. Um, and as, as far as, um, so I, I don't think this is a, this or that is, uh, or we're not doing, we're doing nothing if we don't put up, you know, miles of K rail or uh, all sorts of deflection things. What if we have an aggressive education program, if we have an aggressive uh, approach to this to try and tell people where they're in danger, try to alert people, keep people informed, keep people informed. As this goes on, our, our job is to keep people informed about this. That's not doing nothing, all right? I'm not uh, advocating that we do nothing, all right? I'm just advocating that we do what we can control. And I don't think we can control lots of big redwood trees coming down a canyon up in uh, Boulder Creek, all right? So that, that's just my point there. But um, I, I want to tell a little story, if I can. Uh, in, in 1963, I was 12 years old in Norwich, Connecticut, and we had a dam above our town, and it gave way in March of 1963 and came down and nobody expected this to happen. And what it was that killed people, and there was six people killed, was chunks of ice in this frozen pond behind the dam. The dam gave way. And it uh, destroyed a, a lot. It destroyed a small factory where four people were killed. But I, there was a sandwich shop that I used to go to that was in that debris flow. And they always kept that headline of that 1963 flood. And every time I went in there and got a sandwich, I was reminded of that debris flow and the damage that it caused. And they didn't talk about the buildings that were lost. They talked about the people that were lost. So my primary thing is to make sure that people are safe. Thank you. Hey, Rick. Uh, Director Fultz. Yes, and I think the, the safety aspect of it, um, Rick, is you're absolutely right. It's sort of table stakes. I mean, that has to be done under any circumstances. Um, you know, I, I think uh, I wasn't living in the community at the time. I, I think some of the people on the meeting probably were. Um, but, you know, our last big mudslide anyway was, you know, Love Creek back in 1982, where 10 people were lost. I think it was 10 people were lost. Yeah. Very, you know, tragic situation for the entire community. That in that situation, you know, that was sort of a once in the century storm. No one could have predicted it. You know, that area hadn't been unstable, I don't think, um, and, and it happened. You know, we have a little different circumstance here, in that 
everybody's basically saying, you're going to have the brief load. So this is, you know, in an act of God situation, the facts and circumstances are a little different. This isn't sort of unexpected or uncontrolled. It's this is what's going to happen after a wildfire on the slope. And this is, you know, somewhat exacerbated by the fact that, you know, we own so much property. Um, we own that property in order to protect our watershed. But at this point, that property is not uh, the asset that we want it to be. It's, it's, it's going to be an issue. And I, I just think the district's in a situation where, uh, you know, we are a bit, uh, you know, in a no-win no, no win situation. But this is also where the county, the state, and the federal government need to step up and help out. This is the reason that we have governments in order to do what we can do. And it may be that you can't put miles of uh, K-Rail up. I don't think that was you know, a suggestion even. But the issue is how do you do what you can to protect as much as you can of both property and life. Again, first rule of government, their job is to protect life, safety, and property. Um, and if what we're gonna say is all we're gonna do is, is basically tell people to evacuate when the rain gets to a certain level or a storm is predicted or something like that, then I think we need to be very upfront with our community about that and prepare for the lawsuits and that sort of thing that are that are kind of come out of that. I, I don't support that as the only thing that we do, but um, if that is, we, we need to be really upfront about it. Uh, and that's why I'm glad we're having this meeting. And I think after the meeting with Cal OES, it would be worthwhile to, to reconvene and review at that time what some of those options may be. Thank you, Bob. Lou, you uh, have your hand up. Yes, I'd like to add something um, to what I said before about uh, monitoring earth movement versus rainfall. I mean, I have, I'm not against monitoring rainfall. I just think it may not be a good indicator in our situation, and here's why. As Gail has mentioned before, the ash that's covering all the surface that burned during the fire is hydrophobic. What that means is water runs off of it like water off a duck's back. So the amount of rain that comes down is not really important. It's the amount of rain that gets under the ash and soaks into the ground. So I'm gonna offer one more thing, but it's not in my wheelhouse, but if anybody else knows about it, please please comment, is the what leads directly to the, the, the debris flow is soil saturation. And that's a known entity. Is there some way we can monitor soil saturation along with rainfall and, and earth movement so we get an earlier indication, you know, because there once you get close to that soil saturation, that's when it's going to liquefy and cut loose. Um, I just want to add that as an as another possible monitoring um, something we could do. Thank you, Lou. Uh, we've got uh, so there's a lot of good back and forth going on, and a lot of good input as everybody's noted, and the attendees have got some additional questions. So I'm going to let them uh, comment uh, again, because uh, I don't see any other hands up by even the directors at this point. So Gail Mahood, you have the floor. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, um, I just wanted okay. in part to respond to some of the questions. Uh, one to Lou's question. Yes, the USGS has developed micro seismometers that can detect when um, debris flows are rumbling down a creek. The problem is, is our creeks are so steep that that would give you about two minutes warning, which in some cases, you know, if a, a alarm went off or a horn went off, it might be enough to allow you to run uphill if you were awake. Um, what might be better is they've also developed things where they um, have rain activated gauges that then are laser, uh, they're not gauges, but they're actually measuring the height of the streams. And that's actually the best measure of whether you're going to get a debris flow is because what causes the debris flows is high amounts of runoff and carrying debris. So just before you're going to get a debris flow, you normally will see a great rise in the level of the creek 
or alternatively, a, a rapid decrease in the level of the creek, which means that there's a dam of redwood logs and other things upstream, which could potentially give way. And that's actually what happened. I mean, Lois told me the story that that actually happened in um, Love Creek. So there are things that are short range, but I think the, um, <clears throat> the group that's worrying about this, the fire people, the sheriff, Cal Fire, is they recognize these are all short term. So even though you might get a little bit, maybe a few minutes more with these, these uh, stream level gauges, th the really evacuation is the most important. Thing to do. And um, I spoke to the uh, county geologist, Jeff Nolan, yesterday. He said that the county is trying to push out its evacuation plans and hopes to do it by the end of the week. Um, he has been working for the last month in the field trying to get more granular data on those areas that need to be evacuated. And one of the um, frustrations he's having is he's he's he has identified individual buildings that need, um, you know, individual spots, and he's worried that that there may be over evacuation as it's being considered now uh, by the emergency responders that might lead to evacuation fatigue down the road if the first couple of evacuations don't work. And then finally, to um, uh, Director Fultz's comment. Um, it, it is a level playing field and that if you read the county reports and the uh, um, resource conservation district, they are telling individual homeowners um, to uh, put up uh, sandbags and K rails if they think that, for example, that'll keep stuff from falling down um, steep slopes behind their homes and getting them in. For example, one of the churches in Boulder Creek has uh, already done that to protect itself from debris coming down um, the slope. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Uh, Mark Smalley. Uh, you're on mute, there we go. You're... Yes, hello. Hello, proceed. Um, I wanted to comment, uh, not ask question on what Rick Moran has been saying, and I believe what Gail Mayhout has been saying also. I am a licensed professional geologist, and I would feel hard pressed to go out there into these areas and recommend uh, simple mitigation measures that could be put in place in a month or two. I feel that educate, identify the areas that are likely to have these debris flows, educate the public, have them prepared to evacuate. Yes, you can put up K-Rail, but I think for the amount of a debris flow that a K-Rail is gonna protect somebody's home is gonna be a very limited amount of debris flow. If it's gonna impact life and limb, it's gonna overwhelm any K-Rail that you're gonna have there. So leave it with that, educate the public, be prepared to evacuate for this season coming up. In a longer term, yes, we can be looking, district should be looking at other measures. Thank you. Mark, good uh, input. Okay, any other public comments? Did I see somebody's hand flutter? I guess not. Okay, oh, no, sorry. Uh, Julia Grimm, go right ahead. Um, Julia, did you change your mind? Okay, we'll go uh, back to the uh, board. Okay, Director Fulce, you have a comment? I, I, I keep hearing about educating the public. Um, and I guess my question is educating the public about what? Specifically, that they should know about what they should do. And um, it, right now, so far, what I've heard is educate the public about the potential for debris flows, which I, I think most people are probably getting that message one way or the other. And to educate the public about evacuation warnings. Um, and if it's a heavy rain season, that could mean 
many, many evacuation uh, situations, which is going to have impacts on everybody, uh, significant impacts on everybody. Um, I think the other part of the education, though, is that for those folks that are in those areas, and hopefully the county can identify this more granularly than just everything on um, the eastern side of Ben Lomond Mountain is in danger, um, they also need to be prepared for the fact that if it is a heavy uh, debris flow, they could lose their property. And the question of whether or not they have insurance to cover that kind of situation, uh, a lot of insurance doesn't cover that. And in a situation where people are faced with potentially the loss of their major asset, most people's major asset, um, that is going to be a hard pill to swallow. Um, so I, 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 I hear the education effort, but I think everybody needs to be really clear about what that means and what the implications are if, in effect, the conclusion of the county, state, and federal government is there's really no mitigation uh, measures that can be done in a short period of time to protect anybody or potentially protect anybody. And so you're kind of on your own at that point to do what you believe needs to be done to protect yourself and your property. Thank you, Bob. I think that's what they were saying is with regards to educating and informing. Uh, any other- Ed Education is, is more than more than that. <laughs> that's basically saying go educate yourself. Yeah, we're, well, thank you, Bob. Any other comments or questions from any of the directors on the call? Lou, go ahead. Yes, thanks, Steve. Um, Gail made some comments. Mark made some comments. Both Gail and Mark are on the engineering committee with me. And I'd like to make a recommendation. We're having a special meeting of the environmental committee tomorrow for good reason. And I think it's time to have a special meeting of the engineering committee to talk about the technical aspects of debris flow uh, more. Um, I just think that would be very valuable. It might lead to some recommendations back to the board. Um, I would be interested in what people think. Given the circumstances, I think that might be a great idea. Bob, you have yeah, a I, I agree. Um, and I think the, uh, the there, there's probably two aspects of that. One is protection of district facilities. And the other then is for the rest of the property that we own um, on Ben Lowen Mountain, uh, is there something more beyond that? Um, given that we own the property, therefore we have a certain level of responsibility. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Rick Moran? So uh, I think I, I agree with Lou. Uh, I think the engineering committee, and we have people that uh, can help out in that. Um, I think the engineering committee should meet. I think that this meeting and the number of people that are uh, attending is uh, part of that education process. And the, hopefully the word of mouth comes out of that, that you know the district is actively involved in trying to find some solutions to an upcoming problem, potential problem, all right? Um, I think uh, you talked earlier, Bob, about uh, Rick is having a meeting Tuesday, that we should have a meeting again uh, subsequent to that. Um, so, and, so there's another opportunity for us to get, catching up on information that Rick's gonna get about that that is updated. So, uh, you know, we have to be on top of this. And, you know, I'm, I'm not talking about being anything but, you know, aggressive on this. Um, and um, so I know what I think Rick was trying to look for a recommendation to the board, um, from the board. Um, but I, I like Bob's idea that as soon as possible after your uh, meeting with that group, that uh, you call another special meeting and that we try to have an engineer committee. I, I think that's the direction that I'm feeling out of this. That's, thank you. That's what I'm hearing, but I'm uh, staff time and to start going back and putting a, a lot of information together for the engineering committee meeting is very limited right now. We are gearing up for a winter response, you know, these meetings, preparation 
take time. I'm not against having a meeting if we absolutely need it, uh, such as this meeting tonight and more information as we get it. But we are very short of staff time and there are a lot of meetings being conducted, not just for the district, but with the county and with FEMA. Uh, our time for staff is very limited right now. And if you want staff reports and a lot of information, the time doesn't exist right now. I mean, in a month or so, maybe, uh, to start looking at, at, at things. I'm trying to get a, uh, an engineering report together now on replacing the surface water supply lines, looking at alternatives and so forth to materials and installation. I mean, we are still working almost seven days a week. Staff are still out on the, on the weekend. Saturday, we're still got a water quality issue. We don't have a lot of time right now. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, um, but we just don't have a lot of time right now. Thank you, Rick. Uh, okay, Lois, you have your hand up. I, I found, I, I remember. That girl, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, I know how hard staff's been working and that they've been working like day and night, actually, weekends, everything. Um, but I, I, we can only expect so much out of them and they're giving us more, I think, than we can expect. Uh, but they've got such a work ethic uh, that we're getting more. Uh, but I, I did want to say one thing to what Bob was saying. I think the most important thing is saving life, not saving structures. Um, now, I own my house. I'm a widow. Uh, if I lost my house, it would be financially uh, pretty devastating for me. Um, but not nearly as much as losing my life. Because if I um, can be evacuated, I'm not going to be in one of these de debris flow areas. But just say, if I was, I'd rather have my life than my house. And people need to be educated. They need to be warned. They need to know what to expect and how to save their life. And that might mean get out of there as fast as you can um, and not and leave the property. Um, some people will try to stay and somehow save their property and they'll liable to lose their life. Um, this is heartbreaking. This is difficult. Um, and we want to do the best for our ratepayers, but they've got to know what their part is and what they need to do to protect themselves. Thank you, Lois. Uh, Lou. I just want to uh, make, make a comment. Sorry? No, no, I'm just kidding. Go ahead, Lou. I just want to make a comment back to Rick. Uh, Rick, actually implicit in what I was saying about a special engineering committee meeting was the fact that you would decide when that date was because you're the one that's the busiest of all of us. So um, just to make it explicit, you know, I, I would still like to have that, that special engineering committee meeting, but only when you can attend and you're ready for it. Well, Lou, I'll reach out to you tomorrow and, and we can talk about what would be on the agenda and you know, and I totally understand the need. I just don't want it broad to, to cover a multiple lot of issues. And, you know, like we're trying to get a finance committee meeting together next week. We've got a lot of serious issues to discuss regarding finance. We do have to keep moving with an environmental. We have an RFP coming in uh, that we have to get out. And so um, I'll get with you tomorrow and, and see what we can do to facilitate a meeting. Okay, um, sounds good. And, and try to try to get try to get going on that. Okay, Bob, Director Fultz. 
Yes, thank you. You know, I, I'm I'm not sure we're at an either or position here, where it's either your life or your or your property. Um, I certainly think that um, our community uh, understands that should that uh, proposition come to pass, um, that they know what the most important thing is. Um, uh, but but I, I just don't know that we're there yet. If if everybody um, from the county, state, and federal government walk out of these meetings over the course of the next couple of weeks and basically say, at this point, there's really nothing that can be done, then I think at that point, uh, it becomes that either or uh, proposition. And again, it may not be that we can do everything. It may be that it is prioritized around some areas and other folks might uh, have to do some things potentially uh, on their own. Um, but let's not, um, you know, let's not minimize the impact on people um, who potentially could be facing losing, um, you know, losing their house, losing their home. Uh, it, it's especially if it's an uninsured situation. I, I get that it's better than losing their life, but let's not minimize the overall impact. With respect to the engineering uh, committee meeting, Rick, I think that Lou and you should be able to come up with a way to do that that wouldn't impact staff in, a, in an overly uh, bad way, uh, time-wise. Um, but I do think a conversation around this is probably worthwhile, uh, particularly um, in, in light of some of the meetings that are going to be uh, coming up. We do have some people on our committees that uh, are, are well suited to be able to provide um, specific uh, technical information at the committee level to be able to, to help. And I, I think that would be uh, worthwhile. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Rick Moran. So uh, I'm trying to uh, try to put a bow on this in some way. So um, if Rick needs a recommendation from the board right now. Um, I mean, my recommendation is, you know, follow the work recommendations. All right, there they are. If that's what uh, specifically you need. Um, then I, I, I have no problem with those work recommendations. Uh, the other thing is, is if you want to, if you are looking for some direction as far as putting it on the agenda for the November 5th meeting, I would recommend that we do that as well. You would have uh, new information from whatever meeting you were attending, and um, it would still be that same kind of educational flow that we're trying to have more and more information about this potential crisis. That's good for me. I, I kind of get what I'm thinking, what I'm hearing on the direction is that, you know, we meet with, with Cal OES and we discuss the, the work report. Um, and I'm not trying to minimize this, but there may be a, a down the line from the experts, a, a consensus and a lot that you've heard here tonight that not to do anything um, with uh, installing structures or that type of stuff. Um, there, that may be where this recommendation is going. There's a lot of folks out there that feel that same way. Um, USDA, um, uh, the Natural Resource Conservation Service, they, uh, they indicated that to staff when they reviewed it yesterday. Um, but we're not there yet, and we're going to have this discussion with, with Cal OES. And I think that we should have a meeting very you know, uh, swiftly after that and discuss um, you know, where I think this is going. Um, the main point you know, we wanted to do tonight is we wanna make sure the board is informed and our, our general public and to keep this line of communications open you know, all the way through making sure that the board and the public and our, our, our customers um, know what we know and what we're doing um, and, and decisions to be made at this level. Right. The, the only thing I'd add to that, Rick, would be uh, following up with the county with respect to their communication plans and program. I, I think right. if everybody's talking about educating or informing or advising, that's critical. And if the county's not going to do something or doesn't have a really comprehensive plan uh, to, to, um, to execute, 
then it would be, I think it, at a minimum, it would be responsible for us to put something together for our, you know, district to provide some form of, you know, advanced indication of the potential that exists out there. Yeah, all, all indications are the county is planning to roll out a, a public information campaign um, and, and keep people informed. Uh, and, and that's, you know, they're just, they're moving on that. They're getting mapping together. And I, I believe that they'll uh, put out uh, quite a bit of information and we can piggyback off the information they put out and send it out to our people and, and get it out on our Facebook. And I think you're going to see quite a bit of information coming out. Um, and, you know, you know, we're not looking for the county to solve this problem. Uh, and that's what we, we made clear is that we're looking for help in, in getting to the people at Cal OES and the federal and federal government and, and helping us get a project or, or come to a conclusion on this, uh, on what to do. Um, you know, the district uh, has said all along that, that we will take, um, we will do what we have to do, but we do, do need people to, uh, with the proper, uh, proper credentials uh, to help us on, on what to do. And the work report, you know, has a lot of uh, different information in it, but not enough to, to really move ahead. Are you are you comfortable or happy with McPherson's uh, office and support at this time? Or very much so. I mean, I've talked to Bruce, this office, and Bruce several times this week. He has been out on the watershed. He's led. I wouldn't call it tours, but he's been out uh, with uh, department heads from the county, uh, flood control, uh, public works, uh, with the uh, local um, with the firefighters. Uh, and other local business leaders, and they're discussing this. And uh, uh, Bruce has, like I said, I talked to him as uh, late or as uh, early as tonight, um, and he's engaged. And so is the director of public works, uh, Mr. Machado. He, uh, they're working on getting this uh, Cal OES meeting set up. So, you know, I, I feel that we're working as a team right now, and, and hopefully we can uh, move this ahead one way or another. I'm not sure though what that'll be. Great, thank you, Rick. Uh, well, Bob, do you have a comment? Yeah, just a couple things. One is I wanted to um, make sure I, uh, Julia Grimm's comment got uh, here. She posted something in the um, chat uh, since she had bad audio. She said, my comment as a private individual is that Southern California offers many examples where life and property were saved by properly placed deflection and retention structures. I offer that without comment, that's hers. And then in light of the uh, nature of this issue, Steve, I see there is one additional person, uh, Judy Sherman, who has her hand up uh, and I would recommend that we, we go back to the audience one more time. Once the director stop asking questions, I'll go to her. Sounds great, thank you. Okay. Any, uh... Any other comments, questions from directors? We'll go to our attendees again. And Judy Sherman, you are on. Thank you. Um, I, I just I want to speak to this idea of educating the public because a number of you have said how many people are on this call tonight. And I think we're all on this call tonight because we want to learn about what the conditions are in our neighborhoods, you know, in addition to the whole valley, but what's, what are the conditions in our neighborhoods? Many of us are on creeks that you haven't mentioned. I'm at Albert Creek, for example. Um, and there's been a lot of discussion about Boulder Creek. You may not see the two chat comments that uh, one refers to a question about what about Bull Creek above the Felton treatment plant. Um, I know there are concerns about the Felton Library, which we really haven't yet been able to enjoy. Um, and then another comment is the area above Boulder Creek Town, the only SLV water, only area that SLV water is focusing on. So I suspect that people are on the call to be educated about 
where there are dangers. And I'm imagining the, a map of where these potentially dangerous debris flows are would be very helpful to people. So those of us who are in areas that are high danger areas would know that and be prepared because I think being prepared to evacuate is critical. Um, and, and also if there's anything we can do to mitigate the conditions. So in my neighborhood, we've done some work at the culvert to the bridge that Alba Creek goes under to make sure that the culvert is clear and that when, if we have a big rain, the water's not gonna back up and go over that. That doesn't mean that it's safe down below the culvert, but we're taking the action that we can. So there are things that we can do to mitigate. I agree with that. And I also think that, again, given how many people are on the call, that there are questions that need to be answered, again, by just having a map of what the valley looks like and where we should be paying attention as residents. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Excellent suggestion. Well, just to chime in on that a little bit, there is a map through USGS and the county of debris flows. Um, that is not the water district, that is more the county responsibility and that's where it's at. Um, so there is debris flow mapping out there. Uh, the focus that we've been talking about tonight is due to the fact of our watershed. And our watershed kind of extends across the Ben Lomond Mountain from north of Alba Road and Alba Creek across up to Peavine Creek on 236. So that's kind of where our focus, that's why this discussion is focused to where it's at. Thank you, James. Okay. Uh, okay, Gail, you've got a question or comment? Um, yeah, I just wanted to answer Judy's question. Um, if you look at the um, thing that was attached to the um, agenda, there was a link to the WIRT report, and there are maps in there that are essentially kind of elaborations as, as what James was talking about, the USGS maps, and they rank all of the watersheds in terms of hazards from low, medium to high. And so what you can do on that map is you just look at what the hazard is in the watershed above where you live. And that uh, you can figure it out for yourself by looking at those maps. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Uh, Rick, so are you comfortable with where we are uh, as far as what you're looking to get out of this meeting and do we need to... Uh... Yes, I am, um, as long as the board is. And there are questions about why are we just, you know, concentrating on, on this part of the watershed and this stream. You know, this stream, as far as I know, has been identified as the stream that could leave the channel. Uh, most of the other, and I think all the other streams, yes, they will have debris flows, but they will not leave the channel. Um, this stream has the potential to leave the channel and come down through Boulder Creek Elementary and into the town. Uh, so it's, uh, I think it's one of the most serious, if not the serious uh, debris flow uh, uh, of the, the work report. And Gail's right, the work report has a lot of good mapping in it and actually has parcels identified. Um, uh, there's a lot of good information in that report. But I, uh, to answer your question, Director Swan, yes, uh, we will be setting up another special meeting. Um, the intent is to keep the, the board informed. I will be reaching out to Director Ferris, Chair of the Engineering Committee, and see what we can do to uh, uh, to to read in that group uh, and have them become more involved. Okay, great. Thank you, Rick. Uh, with that, thank you all for your participation tonight, and uh, we'll look forward to continued participation next week as well. This meeting will be adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.